Okay, hi there. Welcome to a macro video. Uh, in lessons today, we kind of mocked up using using student ideas uh, an essay plan on a, a trade and growth question for year two, year thirteen macroeconomics. And I just kind of thought a little bit about the structure of how to build a twenty five marker. It seems that lots of students haven't really had much practice at writing a twenty five marker. Essentially, for Edexcel, you have to build really only five paragraphs. Build two KAA paragraphs, knowledge analysis application, uh, evaluate both of those points, and then add in a final reason comment at the end. So essentially a five paragraph answer, hopefully with a diagram or two in there as well, uh, and good chains of, chains of reasoning, and I think you'll be in great shape. You don't necessarily have to write an excessively long answer. You simply don't have time in the exam. This was the question we kind of looked at in the lesson. I threw this question at students, examine the importance of trade for economic growth in a developing country of your choice. So oftentimes these questions, you know, choose a country that you're interested in, you've done some research and see what you can come up with. Uh, we chose Ethiopia as our sort of discussion question. This is the pattern of trade for Ethiopia, the pattern of goods of exports of goods uh, for 2018. You can see heavily reliant on coffee just over a third of exports of goods come from the coffee sector. Flowers, 10%. Uh, meat, a little bit of manufacturing, but essentially a little bit of textiles, but less than 2%. But essentially, very heavily reliant on primary industries there. And Ethiopia's trade partners in the geographical sense. Again, you can see here that uh, exports, the biggest single trade partner is actually the United States, then followed by China, uh, then I think Germany. So a lot of exports go to China and Far East Asia and quite a substantial proportion of exports from Ethiopia now come to the European Union. So uh, here we go. Let's just quickly work through the answer, the importance, the advantages of trade for a developing country. So we're looking to build two arguments for saying that trade can be a stimulus, can be a catalyst, a support for growth in a country such as Ethiopia. So here's my first KA point, and it says that specialising in and then exporting coffee, for example, coffee mentioned there in the uh, in the previous chart, that generates export revenues, particularly foreign exchange dollars, US dollars, and those dollars then allows Ethiopia to use that foreign currency to pay for essential imports, things that they maybe can't produce or can't produce as well, capital goods, so heavy machinery, computers. Uh, industrial plant that might then be needed to increase their own productive potential and drive growth. Trade at a mutually beneficial terms of trade can shift out a nation's PPF. What I'm trying to do here is saying that trade exports generates foreign exchange, that money can then be used to pay for imports, which themselves could be growth enhancing. Uh, you could use an aggregate demand and supply curve diagram if you wanted, that'd be perfectly fine. I'm going to use a PPF diagram here showing Ethiopia has a relative advantage in coffee, China significantly better in steel. But if Ethiopia trades um, coffee for steel at a ratio, I think, of two to one, the dotted blue line has a gradient of two to one, they can effectively shift out their PPF. And China also stands to benefit as well, trading at two for one. They can export steel to Ethiopia. I haven't fully finished the diagram here, but essentially the argument is that trade can shift out a production possibility frontier, and that's beneficial for both countries, but in particular for Ethiopia, uh, because they can generate the foreign exchange to pay for their imports. However, in reality, uh, I, like, I, quite, I like phrases such as, in theory, this happens, but in practice, something else. However, in reality, Ethiopian producers may not have much control over the price at which they sell their coffee. Perhaps Ethiopian producers are essentially price takers in the world market. And there is a risk that global prices are volatile, unpredictable, or indeed fall over the long term. Perhaps the price of coffee declines in real terms, maybe more countries starting to grow coffee, the real price comes down, in which case their export revenues will drop, and the Ethiopian government will therefore have less fewer resources to fund their basic public services and infrastructure. So the danger is that if Ethiopia emphasizes too much uh, one crop or one product if revenues go down the risk is that growth will suffer because the ethiopian government won't have the tax revenues coming in to fund their essential investments my second point uh, is that trade 
can be growth enhancing because it often leads to an increase in investment in export industries. Don't forget AD is C plus I plus G plus X minus M. So if Ethiopia opens their economy to trade, we expect to see an increase perhaps of foreign direct investment, FDI, into Ethiopia in industries such as maybe coffee processing or emerging technology. Uh, some of the students said in the class today, always, always use the word emerging tech. Always sounds better, doesn't it? I don't know what it means, but emerging tech. Maybe financial technology, maybe, maybe software engineering, that kind of stuff. And also light manufacturing, such as textiles. So trade encourages an inflow of investment. Higher levels of FDI might lead to more jobs in the formal economy, which in turn generates extra tax revenues and can therefore increase per capita incomes which lifts people out of extreme poverty and adds to household consumption. So trade is a way of engineering a, an increase in per capita incomes and jobs. Uh, my students were suggesting they would want to bring in the multiplier effect here, possible multiplier effect of increased employment, maybe the accelerator effect if consumer spending is going up, a little extra investment to meet that. And obviously a case here for showing an increase in AD and pot potentially an increase in aggregate supply. However, there might be limits to the amount of investment that comes in Ethiopia, after all, is landlocked. And uh, there's always a danger, too, that the country can become too dependent, too reliant on inward FDI rather than developing their own manufacturing capability. And, of course, inward investment can generate GDP and exports and growth, but you might want to challenge the idea that the government's going to get a lot of tax revenues. There could be corporate tax avoidance, for example, by TNCs, uh, which limits the tax dividend and therefore holds back how much the Ethiopian government can spend on healthcare and education. We're almost there, everybody. We've built two KA points. We've made two valid evaluation points. We just need to add in a final reason comment. My strong advice to you is to avoid just repeating yourself if you can. Try to say something fresh. Maybe look at the question with a slightly different slant. Here's my take. The importance attached by Ethiopia to economies of scale in their export sectors is illustrated by the opening of several industrial parks around the new international airport at Addis Ababa. In the long run, trade increases jobs in export sectors and related industries can lead to rising per capita incomes and, and better human development scores. Ethiopia, one of the fastest growing countries in Africa in recent times, clearly. But uh, overall, a key challenge is for Ethiopia to diversify their economy so they're not too heavily dependent reliant on exporting primary products. I've just chucked in an example there would be the growth of Ethiopian Airlines servicing both tourist and freight traffic. Ethiopia is interesting, it doesn't quite have the economic complexity of African countries such as Kenya for example. Uh, they seem to be doing, they seem to be building a wider range of industries on the basis of uh, diversifying their economy. Either way, the, the final paragraph doesn't have to be too long We've done our job, we've made two valid KA points, we've evaluated twice, we've used the diagram, and I think we've done a good job on this essay. And I hope you found it useful um, going it through going through it with, uh, with me over the last few minutes. Okay, folks, thanks a lot. Take care.